On this episode of the People of Pearland podcast, we interview Dante Prescott from Pearland Public Works. Water sewer line maintenance. Mm. Um, before that, I was... Uh, was that your number two favorite job? It was. Sorry. It it. It's a poop joke. Stay tuned for more. Go. Oh, no. Is my That's drool stain drying? Yeah, we're good. All right. We're good. Just don't cut to my camera for a while, please. <laughs> Uh, welcome everybody to the next episode of the People of Pearland podcast. Uh, we were lucky enough to just casually run across Dante Prescott in the halls, uh, and so we ambushed him and said, "Come in here, yeah. record an episode with us." No, so you ambushed him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm ambushed. sorry, that was me specifically, and, and I did that because I know he can't say no to me. I, I uh, which is uh, which is my first uh, sort of question: What you never say no, like ever. To anybody that I've seen. like Okay, so here's a question. Have you ever said no to anybody? Yes. Really? Yes. Huh. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, what, what, who do you say no to? What my, do you- my, my kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's the first that's- two people that I say no to. But, okay. But no, there, uh, there's times I don't I don't know what comes off as strong. Someone may be sensitive to a, to a no. Right. So I uh, find tactical ways of saying, eh, I'm not going to be able to help you out with this one. So I'm, to I'm too fragile. One. That's it. You, you don't say no to me because you're afraid I'm like, I can't handle it. The only reason why I don't say no to you is because I can tell you're a genuine person. Oh, oh, wow. That yeah. says a okay. lot. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That's good. I, you know, I, I, I talk a lot about um, the people that we work with, right? And that's what this whole podcast is about. Uh, the people that make Pearland what it is, mm-hmm. right? Um, and, and not not making what it is, but but support it from, a yeah. you know, an essential services perspective. Um, and, you know, we're we're fortunate to get to, to meet a lot of different groups, you know, a lot of different employees. Um, and we never I've never experienced anybody that isn't overly helpful and energetic and and committed to their job and, you know, all those different things. But, you know, Whenever I think of that individual, you're top of that list every single time. Yeah, dude, I appreciate um, that. It's uh, it's hard to keep up with your yeah. <laughs> energy. It's funny that this happened on day one of us doing this because when I thought of this podcast, I thought of Dante. Yeah, that's one of look one of the that. first one. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, so being uh, the poster boy for City of <laughs> yeah, right. um, tell us about you, you've been here for a while, right? Yeah, um, January makes eighteen years. Goodness. Yep. And Awesome. You've done a bunch of things in the city in yep. a time. So let's run through your professional accomplishments here. So you're superintendent of right, uh, away, right away right now. What did you do before that? I was a supervisor in the distribution and collections crew. Which is on the water side. That's on the water right. sewer side. Oh, yeah. water sewer line maintenance. Mm. Um, before that, I was... Uh, was that your number two favorite job? It was. Sorry. It it It's a poop joke for the... It, it was. And, you know, there's there's a lot of jokes behind that. You aren't a true, you are not a true water waste water professional until you've been christened by water and waste water. Oh, so that's a that's a legit dirty job. Yeah. It is a very legit dirty job. So, I mean, I can't I have to believe that, like sanitary you know like how to how to work in those environments but still stay healthy you know and and protected uh, protected yeah, right? right all the ppe like all of that i mean there has to be a significant amount of time invested in making sure that you have the right gear make sure that it's clean making sure that you know how to operate in those services because didn't you you one time had to climb down in a storm i mean in a in a sanitary yeah. or in a sewer for at like w- one of the businesses it was like what, yeah, how far Walmart. down on the ground it yeah. was around uh this was a shallow one it was around 20 22 feet deep did you had to get down in there and like unclog it right yeah yeah re- re- retrieve a uh a tool that someone dropped down in the bottom Jeez. Uh, it was messing everything up. yeah i was messing everything up and then there was another one the very large one off of uh dixie form and 518 we uh basically cleaned that that well wet well lift station so everything was blocked off we got down in there and cleaned and scrubbed around for some rehab work and it was uh it was pretty pretty crazy yeah. you know being down in there and you'd look look around I'm like at any second something bad could happen you mm-hmm. know but thank god it didn't we had you know good guys on top right type of equipment 
in nice the right training. And yeah, like right that. training. Yeah, hoist harnesses, every the, the full yeah. thing. So yeah. we were prepared for that one. But you know, when things happen, things happen. Right. Somebody got to step up and get things done. And yeah. I'm I'm always willing to put me in first, coach. You know what yeah. I mean? So I don't yeah. want to see anybody else make a sacrifice for something that they're not ready for. Sure. So. Well, and I think that that I mean that's part of the key, right? I mean, and part of what I what I see is, you know, you never put yourself in a position uh, or put somebody else in a position that you yourself wouldn't do. Exactly. And, and in public works, especially, you know, I, a lot of the guys are there. They'll do it before they make one of their own people do it. Right. You yep. know, exactly. Uh, or they're the right culture. there beside them. Right. Yep. Yep. Uh, and, and I think that that speaks volumes about the types of people that we have and types of leadership that cultivate that and then bring that up through the ranks. Yeah. Right. Um, so going back to your history, so you, uh, uh, before you were in, uh, um, distribution and collections, not distribution and collections. Yeah. 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 Distribution and collections. What, uh, what did you do before that? I was in, uh, lift stations, worked in lift stations. Uh, Which another know, part of the sewer system, another the wastewater part of the sewer yeah. system. Yeah. I worked my way up there with, uh, absolutely no experience and, the city provided some training for me to take advantage of, and I went with it and obtained all my wastewater licenses and um, and moved up through the ranks there through knowledge and certificates. Which is effectively a college degree. I mean, yeah. it, it takes tons of, of hours. And is that um, those certificates that you get, um, you go to work and then you go to school at night or you you go to like um, dedicated weeks of, of training for that? Or how, how do those? Yeah, it was a dedicated um, three and a half days um, of training per certificate that you were or per class mm -hmm. to obtain a certificate. It wasn't just one class. Here's your certificate. You sure. had to go to multiple training to obtain just the minimum. And then as uh, as you want to advance, there's more training associated with that um, confined space entry training. I remember one time they uh, brought out a, a, a tanker, blindfolded us and put SCBA on us and was a whole lot of noises banging around and you Ooh. had to crawl around in the dark and smoke and everything crazy, hitting man. you and find this device and put it together and, and get retrieved back out there. That was yeah. probably the coolest training that we, yeah. that we've had. So, you know, you're in a safe environment, but yeah. it's still a stressful. Yeah. It was, I mean, it that was very stresses stressful. Me yeah. just that kind about of stuff that. fascinates me because uh, I'm sure we'll talk about it more as we go on, but like the idea of a first responder, yeah. right. You know, yeah. and we hear about PD training and fire training, but you never think about the training that goes into, you know, this department, yeah. right. You know, and, and what these guys do to serve the city, you know, it's, it's some press well and that's a really good point you know i mean uh and, and not certainly not to knock on no uh, yeah not at all pd and fire because certain their, their jobs they have a very specific yeah. skill set uh that they're trained to do but um you know in a lot of situations um the mechanics the 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 machinery that you're working with yeah. uh the pressures that you're working with literal psi on mm -hmm. on water systems or wastewater systems uh you know the the potential failure points are, oh yeah um uh, innumerable. I mean, you know, the, the thing I always comment about, um, and it's just, it is what it is, but in a lot of situations, when it comes to water and wastewater, people don't notice it until it's not working the way they expect it to, exactly. right? Until yeah. the water's not coming into their house or not leaving their house. Right. And then it's top of mind, mm -hmm. right? And uh, for you all, I mean, it's an everyday deal, right? That's, it is. It, it definitely is. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, there's a lot of things, like you said, that people don't realize, even the residents. We had one situation I remember years back. Uh, it was the first time that I've seen it. Um, we seen a water leak, just a small water leak on the edge of the road. And you looked at the landscape in someone's house and there was this, this huge curvature in the landscape. It was like, man, what? What is that? I've never seen anything like that. And it was literally a water bubble underneath oh the grass. Whoa, yeah. And you could step on it. It's like a water bed, but it was <laughs> it was crazy. in the grass, dude. Yeah, it was it wow. was crazy. And uh if if you punctured it, water would it shoot just, out of it. Yeah. And this was in front of somebody's yard. And it was the craziest thing that I've ever seen. I didn't know what that was. And once it was explained to me, I was like, well, let me step back because there could be a hole under there that we don't yeah. know about. Right. You know, yeah. and the grass is just holding everything right. intact. But yeah, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things when 
when the guys are excavating or, you know, any type of equipment, any sure. holes being dug, you know, that's why they always tell people to stand back because we don't know what what can yeah, yeah, yeah what could sure. possibly go wrong. So, oh, yeah. but uh, the team, they do real good. They got great leadership to make sure that everybody's safe and everybody's doing things, you know, the the efficient way. Mm-hmm. So, right. so, and you were, uh, you were here during Hurricane Harvey. Obviously, yeah. You've been here. Uh, were you working in um, dis- distribution collections at that time or had you already moved over to? No, I was in distribution and collections. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so you helped shore up like our uh, wastewater treatment plants and yeah. try to prevent those from flooding. Uh, Barry Road specifically, you rode yeah. over there in high water. And yeah. I know you're not a fan of water. Not at all. And not at all. Like that. As soon as I gained knowledge that there were uh, gators in Paraland and <laughs> that Man. night, you know, you're already. You, you went out there in the dark or in, was it? It was dark outside. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. You couldn't see as you stood on Paraland Parkway and you have the big ditch along uh, Barry Rose. You couldn't see the ditch. It was yeah. water was everywhere. Yeah. And I'm just thinking to myself, what monster is lurking through this water? You know, <laughs> could be a bull shark. All I know, you know, and, you know, it's a ditch. But, you know, I mean, you're more to likely to run it. into a water moccasin, which is still not good. No, not yeah. at all. Um, not, not, not for me. I, I would be the one that would scream to the top of my lungs, <laughs> jump in somebody's arms next to me to get me away from it. Yeah, that that's me. But, um, you know, you have to buckle down and, and get to it. Right. There's a, an objective. You let's meet the objective. You know, we if this thing goes down, you know, we don't know what's to happen with that. We know yeah. the mission was to save the plant. Let's do what we got to do to save the plant. So uh, we we typically have the mindset of, you know, we're here to serve a die trying. Right. So right. Yeah. Uh, by any means yeah, necessary, let's get it done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So moving from water to or wastewater to uh, uh, right away. Uh, what, what's different about your job now? What, you know, um, how, what, less poop, I think, probably. A lot less poop, <laughs> uh, but you feel like you're getting pooped on a lot. Yeah. You know, the trying to keep up with the um, the complaints, you know, the residential requests, you know, now it's uh, streets and drainage is the big topic here lately. Sure. A lot of drainage concerns and uh, we just have been an, impacted by rain for uh, three weeks or so now since the first day of school is what I call it. And um, so the, the turf management aspect of it. And so uh, some just don't understand it. Some of these things take time. We can't just, yeah. you know, jump over there, get this done, get that done. You know, we're a small group uh, with a lot of um, requests. And so we're, we're handling those. And, I, and I'm extremely confident that the guy's been doing well and and getting that done but um so you have a hot shot crew that as requests come in you're seeing those tickets and you're prioritizing those based on what's the what's the the mechanism there is it you know risk of life safety and then move on from there or is there how are those prioritized so uh, i'll go back i don't necessarily prioritize those things because i i feel as if they're competent enough where they should be able to decipher what's your teams yeah right. exactly yeah. so uh i i trust them to make those decisions but and what yeah. kind of requests are they are there you know it's like low-hanging limbs and uh sidewalk repairs right do those come through yeah sidewalk room? requests for the hot shot crew will typically get you know any debris uh that's in a ditch alongside the road Illegal dumpings, low hanging limbs, high grass, things sure. of that nature is what the hotshot crew will take care of. Graffiti, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. uh, any any one off re- request. Those are the guys that those pretty much guys. get that done. How big is your team? Uh, mean- there are a team of three. On the hot shot crew. On the hot shot crew. Yeah. Yes, yes sir. Uh, and then what else falls in right away? Uh, you, you all the mowing contracts. All the mowing contracts. We have uh, sidewalks. We have drainage, uh, curbs, pavement marking, uh, street signs. Street sweeping, is that yours? Street sweeping is mine. Um, Goodness. Anything within the right of way um, is what we oversee. So I think I know this number right. Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, uh, square acres mode in right of way is 250 acres? Um, 259, I believe, is what it is. Pretty close. Um, I it's, hope Eric doesn't see this and say <laughs> no that that's wrong. But point uh, two. Yeah, <laughs> I, I believe it was like somewhere around 330. Then we got to. 
252 now we're at 259 somewhere around that so and it's about a million dollar a year contract yeah 1.3 million dollars is just the one contract um we have uh extra services around seventy thousand dollars 1.2 and then another seventy three thousand dollars for um other maintenances within that uh, extra services within that contract, but we also have a another contract for um, rough cut mowing that's around two so crazy forty two fifty range, and then another contract rough cutter like the fields that we have the yeah it's open just, ditch yeah. With a, um, with a um, uh, tractor saw. Like yes, that. sir. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And then we have another <clears throat> one for our critical facilities, mm-hmm. water and wastewater facilities, lift stations, and uh, the city-owned properties, FEMA lots mm-hmm. and stuff. So there's another contract that we manage also. I've done the math on it before, and it ends up – because, we, you know, obviously we – when you say a million dollars for mowing, people, they can't comprehend how mowing can be that expensive. Um, And, you know, when you look at a total number, yeah, a million dollars is a lot of money, but you got to remember 250 acres, give or take, is a lot. And they're doing it most times on a weekly, bi-weekly basis. And so when you look at it on a per mow compared to a residential lot you know a third of an acre right. give or take mm-hmm. it's like 35 dollars. it's not it's more cost effective than uh a resident would pay for a single yeah, right. individual lot yeah we're um, not just a simple cut weed edge sure. and blow yeah. this is more in depth of uh you know managing the the, the turf out right. there within yeah. the right away and, and then, it's a it's a what you uh, what do they call it um uh, a unit price contract, right? So if they miss a week because it's raining, we're not paying for that. Exactly. Right. Um, and so that, that, that's one of those things that people see us out there. It happens on the, on the water side too. You know, they see somebody flushing a fire hydrant and they see somebody mowing and see a price on the contract. <clears throat> and they don't know all the texture that goes into right. that, yeah. all the work that you do to, you know, find the right bidder for that and to bid that thing every three years yep. or renew that contract every year yep. or, you know, gripe at them when they miss something or, you know, that that's a lot to to maintain. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's definitely <laughs> a lot to maintain. <laughs> definitely a lot. Uh, <clears throat> can't argue against that, you know, and there's there's budget dollars on the backside of that that, you know, there's uh, managers that we have to oversee, too. So right. it's not just getting the contract. Do we have the money for it? Do we have the money to provide other services? You know, there's an operating budget that we have to maintain, and so and you, uh, it, in in those budgets, you're also maintaining the uh, the sidewalks budget. So you're doing sidewalk repairs. Sidewalk uh, repairs. We have. Uh, do you know how many miles of sidewalk we have in the city? Man, that's it's a, a good lot. Huh? Question. Yeah. Um, you can make up a number. I wouldn't know. Any I'm going right. to say somewhere around. 600 there's a lot of numbers that goes around in this <laughs> yeah. guy's head yeah uh i know that i know the number of miles of water and wastewater lines and it's like 500 4, 481 and 500 the other uh but i've never thought to ask the question about the sidewalks one. yes it's i gotta i know for streets we have around 980 miles uh 220 of that is asphalt and another 750 is concrete 980 miles of streets yeah lane miles so you yeah. could just drive through pearland and drive a thousand miles oh, that's, that's shocking yeah that's crazy yeah how do you maintain all of that oh man i got an awesome team yeah that's that's what i was gonna say i got an awesome team man uh those guys they prioritize you know um what's the need we also did a back in 2017 we did a road study throughout the city yeah was that the pavement condition index exactly pci we're talking about acronyms earlier there you go pci is one that's burned into my memory now pavement condition index will always be so that i mean with that uh type of study it helps us decide even though it may look bad on your street but uh from the study his street is a whole lot worse more severe so yeah we try and prioritize that way right. so well and again another thing we were talking about this uh in our last episode uh but you know the uh, future planning being thoughtful about uh, you know the things that we do we also talked about it recently in uh, a project we did for the Pearland Parkway Traffic Circle, which obviously a different group, capital mm-hmm. projects, but, um, you know, anticipating uh, what's going to need service and when and trying to take care of that 
proactively rather than reactively. Exactly. Uh, and uh, I mean, that's heck, that's a full time job in and of itself. Just saying, all right, this road is has a PCI of 61. This one's got an 80. Obviously, we need to do the 61 or, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, in addition to that, I know that, <clears throat> you know, we get projects, federally funded projects through tech stop for paving stuff. We get stuff through the county. Uh, we get uh, things that are joint funded by the TERS or mm-hmm. the transportation improvement plan, things like that. Um, so what all, you know, when you're doing road projects, um, I mean, you're trying to get it from everywhere, right? To do as much as possible. Is that really the name of the game or how do you, how do you kind of approach that? Uh, so currently we have an interlocal agreement with uh, Brazoria County Road and Bridge. They do X miles. Uh, just amount. asphalt though, right? Yeah, just asphalt. And so uh, we utilize uh, that advantage and then uh, we put together our own in-house um, book for any other asphalt work. We're currently trying to put together something for uh, concrete streets to get more out of it. But our sidewalk contract is like a 70-30 split. So we can get 70% of the sidewalks, 30% of uh, street panel replacements done out mm-hmm. of our current contract. And so, and so when you a say a book, I mean, you've got a list of like, okay, here are the things that we know we need to do. We just need to get funded yeah. for them. We have a, um, uh, a memo that was published a uh, couple couple years ago but what was committed to what we were going to do and so we want to knock out everything that's on that list but we also have a contract that we uh put together in house with our engineering group and our uh director robert upton he helped us out with and so that's our basically our template for the future so we going to utilize that same packet over and over again you know to make sure that we're not rewriting the the program on how we do things like yeah. this is going to be our standard you can just kind of go through it methodically exactly piece at a time yep makes sense to me it's Yep. Um, on the sidewalk front, I know in the past, and correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, you're also looking at or vendors that can do like uh, mud jacking and grinding and stuff like that to try to salvage the the panels that are good, but get them all leveled back and things yeah. like that. You all still do that? We still do that from time to time. Uh <laughs> Ideally, the aesthetics of mud jacking creates little pilot holes in the sidewalk. Yeah. And, you know, uh, we explore that option when, when it's needed, you yeah. know. But the uh, the remove and replace seems to be the best one and done. We're in and out of here and we don't have to worry about any complaints or anything like that. But and Can you do that all internally or you have to you outsource? Oh, we have to contract those, yeah. those services out. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's probably very specialized skill. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah. We can drill a hole into some sidewalk and, sure. you know, try and use an air pump, pump some concrete <laughs> in it, but I don't think that yeah. would work. So, yeah. yeah. I did just, and this is a personal note, I, I leveled a piece of concrete on my own at my own house and physically, I mean, I'm not, you know, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. <laughs> really? I had a pry bar that was, I'm not kidding you, it's nine feet long. Uh, and I don't even know, my dad was like, yeah, he used a pry bar. I'm like, where do I get a, and he just had this metal rod. <laughs> oh, he had one. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. It was nine feet long. And I, I got, I had to get my wife and said, <laughs> Get on the end of this yeah. thing uh-huh. and just put, you know, not just because it's long, probably. <laughs> and I stuffed mud underneath there and leveled it. It was not a fun job. That's crazy. I don't, That's uh, I don't know two weeks ago. I went out with uh, <clears throat> Josh Heiberger. We went to go document some guys who were changing out a fire hydrant. And I saw the tractor <clears throat> literally like no biggie just lifted up the sidewalk. And it just like it didn't add up in my head <laughs> that something could be lifted that easily, yeah. you know. But uh, I, I was telling him as we were out there, like, I love any day that we get an opportunity to be with y'all because I, it's every day for y'all but it's like kind of eye-opening to me right yeah this is my first job in a local government you know setting so i feel like anything public works is just like a you know like like i said there's there's no eye on that right there's no eye on the the work that you you guys do over there you know um when when you see a guy standing head deep in in water repairing a a main break like that's you know that's commitment in, in in my opinion you know so i'm just cool stuff man i um when they were rehabbing the water tower we climbed up there oh um, yeah and i did it the once and i won't do it again (laughs) Um, because i mean i just i'm not i am not cut out for that kind of work i'm not either (laughs) terrified of heights so you don't like water you don't don't like like water so So right away is good right away is good feet on solid ground that's right yeah so uh, 
Have you always worked in, in public works or would you do, you know, professionally? What else have you done? You know, that's pretty been the start of my my adult uh, working career was public works. Well, meter services. I started over here in City Hall. Excuse me. And um, phone calls are allowed. In yeah. Podcasts, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I started over here <clears throat> in City Hall as a meter field service tech, and then I went over to public works. But Paraland's just been kind of kind of it for me, man. I, I've learned a lot here. Before that, I was um, always good with working with my hands in high school i did mill and cabinet making so hmm. i was always you know that's good with, it is it, it, it really was and i got a few awards in high school i thought that was pretty cool so wow. i was like i know i'm good with these what what else can i you know use right. these hands for and so it's, it's worked out great for me. what brought you to to pearland what what, what brought you you know <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, long before I got on for the city, I was working as a contractor installing all of the meters in Pearland. The uh, last time around. The last time Crazy. around. Yeah. Man. So I uh, worked with the um, group Tilsh Engineering and um, we went out through the city and it was like you went to a new house every day and uh, the people out here were nice. The employees were pretty good. And I was like, man, it's, it's it's probably, yeah, it's probably going to be, be my spot, you mm-hmm. know, and so um uh, I was blessed. I got an opportunity to work for the city uh, doing the same thing that I was uh, contracted to do and uh, navigated my way around to something that I like doing and uh, bought a home outside of Houston. And I was like, I got to get in this place, you know, so I've seen the kids that go here and right. so I end up uh, buying out here and send so my kids to yeah. too? Yeah. 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 Just drinking all the cool. Drinking all <laughs> of it. Right. Drinking all of it. So it's it's worked out great. I have no no complaints. My family is happy, you yeah. know, and I got a nice, great group of people that I work with. And Morgan and Projects helped me mm-hmm. out. Jennifer helps me out. Everybody in Projects, Tiffany, all of them, yeah. they help me out. So I, everywhere I go, you know, I. Just, everybody want they're happy to commit to whatever crazy idea we have or right. you know uh if we you know everything that every experience that i have people are committed to making the community better right in some way in in I'm, I've yet to experience anybody that's just a warm body in a seat, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody has... Putting in their time. Yeah, yeah sure. they, they they have an impact in this community. Right. And it's a, it's pretty direct. I mean, you can see uh, the direct connection between what it is that our people are doing um, and the influence that, that has on the community. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty special. I mean, that's, um, you know, for me personally, I mean, I grew up in Pearland, graduated from Pearland, and uh, to be able to see that for a community that raised me and shaped me is is huge but for you you know committing to professionally but then also personally Mm -hmm. committing to being here is um that's that's something else for sure in fact our our first uh uh interview that same same deal deal. raise your family here and 20 years with the city and and, yeah. yeah crazy and uh so it's i think that that's like if i'm looking for when we talk employees that that inspiration that's that's got to be it right right yeah. that's the ultimate well you've seen so many different stages of what Pearland has been yeah, you know? yeah, yeah i mean a sure. lot has happened in the last 20 years yeah, yeah when crazy. i started shadow creek was uh just cleared out right so and uh to watch where the city is now and and you know the backside of it is like man i I help with this. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like that's something else. You can see your thumbprint on exactly everything that you did. You can. And and you drive by it every day. Every I mean, day. Yeah. You yeah. know. Make my groceries here. Yeah. yeah. Eat here. Play ball here. You Don't know. fish here because you gotta go. Don't fish here. Yeah. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Can't tell you about those spots. No. Your secret. no. <laughs> Top <laughs> secret stuff right there. <laughs> that's great. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. It's your I question. don't know. You just made me forget now that I was gonna I do I do have a question. How's the new building treating you? You know, the <laughs> the new building is 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 cool. It's uh you know, I'm grateful we're, you know, out of the old. I like to see, uh, you know, a new building constructed for the rest of the guys in public mm-hmm. works, you know, but the you new building is great. Yeah. Yeah. Got to start somewhere. You're right about that. Is so, there anything you miss about the old building? 
Um, no, the the last experience I had with the old building, there was like a twelve foot snake slithering oh, down the hallway. No. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure it was just a water snake. I don't know what kind of <laughs> snake it was, but I'm glad I wasn't there. <laughs> I promise you that. So, um, nah, that still makes my skin crawl when I think about it. But, um. <laughs> Yeah, I, nothing I miss about the the old building outside of the memories. You I, don't, know? I don't mean to freak you out, but um, the the age of the building doesn't necessarily dictate whether snakes can get in or not. Because they've had them at UHCL, like in the really. Uh, <laughs> he's on the second floor, so he's no, that's no, true. no, wait, no, yeah, you're on the, I'm on the first floor. <laughs> you're on the first yeah. floor. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. You're gonna be watching over <laughs> yeah, your Sorry, yeah. But you never see the inside of your office, anyways. That's I mean, true. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 very, grass very is not grow under your feet. Yeah. No. No, I like that. <laughs> For everybody watching or listening, uh, we have a new Orange Street Service Center, nice state of the art building. It's rated, I don't know what it's rated for, but it does have an emergency operations center in it yep. specifically for public works uh, so that we can maintain continuity of the Central City Services and make sure employees are are uh, protected and can be ready to respond at a moment's notice. Yep. And uh, it's a nice little, good little compound right there, our fleet. Uh, division is right there as well yep. and uh, old animal services right next door uh, so you should go by and check it out it's a cool place cool building yep it's got a uh, it's a future of Thailand. <laughs> yep that's right and what do you think of all the artwork in there that, that yep. uh I, I like well, it. I like the old plaque. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. I did that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, we, um, our, our team w- started working on those ideas in the vet, you mm-hmm. know, with the finish, it up, finish out of that building. Uh, said, man, we need to put some stuff up here. And uh, the old plat was one of the first ones. It's, that's the original plat, 1894, yeah. uh, from Zelensky. Right. Uh, Count Zelensky. I, I can't, I'm blanking on his first name. I think it was. Uh, and uh, so he submitted that, yeah, to Brazoria County. And we had to tweak it a bit to get it to that. Yeah. Uh, size uh but we put the same thing in city manager's office oh that's cool uh nice nice throwback to the yeah. origins and then the mission vision leadership philosophy uh we did that right outside the elevator yeah um but uh, we we like things like that we like to remember where we started that's yeah. what we like to remember right. yeah for sure but never forget where we're going there you go oh that's man <laughs> That's why we're the communications guys, right? (laughs) Always on the hunt for puns. Yeah, there you go. Pearland people of Pearland podcast puns. (laughs) I like it. (laughs) Um, So we like to wrap every single one of these up with that. Um, for us, it's always why, why we, why we get up every day, why we have the jobs we do, why we got to do a podcast on a Wednesday afternoon. Right. Uh, so why do you do what you do? Why are you here? It's, it's funny because I've said this uh, several times uh, in the last couple of weeks, but, uh, it's not the job. I don't come here for the job every day is it's the people that I work with you know I work with some genuine individuals you know the, we got a lot of good people that work here for the city of Pearland some may not may or may not know that but I appreciate them right it makes 18 20 25 years just like nothing yeah. right so uh if it wasn't for the people that I work with I don't think that I'd be here yeah so I, I truly enjoy being around good genuine people so I dig it. I, uh, I'm inspired every single day. Uh, I mentioned this in our last interview, but, uh, it's, uh, it's almost annoying how good and pe- and, and genuine the, the people are and helpful, yeah. you know, uh, it makes it really hard to keep up. Um, and, uh, but it's, it's so inspiring and, and, um, you know, that's, that's the thing that we hope, people get to see is the commitment and passion that our people have Mm -hmm. to the work that we do every day. You know, we take it seriously and personally, you know? Um, And so, you know, we're certainly thankful for you and everybody like you and all the people that you bring up after you that you pass that on to. I appreciate that. That's a, that's a generational thing for sure. All these young whippersnappers. That's right. All you youngins over there. (laughs) Cool. Any Uh, other last words, Dante? Anything, any words of wisdom? Yeah. (laughs) Words of wisdom. (laughs) 
Um, PPWW. <laughs> Any words of wisdom that I could share is um, just be patient. Mm. Right, uh, patient people of Pearland podcast. Yeah, just be be patient and and understand those that um, that push you. They push you because they see something great in you. Yeah, that's good. I like I that. It. Feel it. Cool. All right. All righty. Thank you, Pearland. Thank you. See you all next Join time. Us for the next episode. All righty.